See that? All that fuel would have stayed in the bottom of the bowl and rotted it out. All right, so the generator can be one of the most neglected tools in your household. It can wind up sitting for a year or two years or even longer, depending on how long it is between uses. What'll happen is, is you'll wind up fiddling and fumbling around with it during a storm, and then you can't get it running because the carburetor looks something like this because it wasn't stored properly. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you my exact method for storing these things and storing any small engine for that matter. This particular generator has sat for well over two years, so we're going to find out together if it's going to run right. All right, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so let's go ahead and pour some gas in here and see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen myself. It should be fine. All right, so only just the second pull and it started right up. So let me show you exactly what I did two years ago to make this work like that. All right, so if you're gonna wind up storing this thing for maybe six months or less, I always like to use the ethanol free fuel. That does help with the uh, preservation. And I also like to use this stuff right here. This is the Startron fuel preserver, fuel treatment, whatever you wanna call it. Now, of course, there's other ones on the market, but I usually use this one. This will store the fuel for maybe, maybe a year, you know, if you're lucky. If you're finding any value in this video, please click that like button below and subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. The ultimate goal, if you're storing this thing long term, is to get all the fuel out of the system. And I do mean all of it. When it's shipped from the manufacturer, there's no fuel in it, and that's how you want to put it back for long-term storage. Now, this particular one has a screw on the carburetor. All right, we can unloosen this screw and let this drain. And just leave it like that. Now, you're going to want to make sure that your fuel selector switch is on if you have one or fuel cutoff you'll want to make sure that's on so it'll draw from the tank make sure the gas cap is off so that you have air behind water or air behind gas in this case and just let it sit there and drain until it's as empty as you can get it so the tank has finished draining and i've buttoned everything up right here i've tightened my uh, valve back now if your generator doesn't have a drain screw like this one has what I will usually do is close the valve on the tank and I will remove the fuel line from the carburetor, okay? Then I'll put the fuel line into the gas can directly and then I'll open the valve back on the gas tank and then let the gas tank drain through the hose right straight into the gas can. Now, the reason I didn't do it on this one that way is because it's really hard to get to back up under here. It's a lot easier just to drain it through here and then that's that's that it's no problem so i went ahead and put my hose back okay i've closed my valve now the last thing that i like to do on this well i don't know if it's the last thing but we'll see is i will open the bottom of the bowl see if you notice the bottom of the bowl is a little bit lower than the set screw so what that's going to do it's going to leave a little bit of fuel right there in the bottom of the bowl and let's test that because I've drained everything as good as I could. All right. I put a rag down there or paper towel so that I'm not going to make a mess. Oh, yeah. See, I can see. I'll show you here in a second. A little bit more came out. All right. So I will see that all that fuel would have stayed in the bottom of the bowl and rotted it out. A lot of people think you can just open this screw and it's good enough, but it'll make a big rust spot in the bottom of your bowl. So I'm going to leave that like that to finish draining for a little while, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and tightened up my bowl. Now I wound up taking off this drain screw right here to kind of persuade the rest of the fuel to come out of there. I was kind of tilting this around and 
I put a small amount of compressed air in there so that I could persuade the rest of the fuel to come out of there. I didn't want to leave any fuel in there. But it's pretty dry now. You could leave this open for a week or two weeks or whatever. Just don't forget to tighten it all back up before you put fuel in it or you're going to have a big leak. All right, so that's just about it, but just a couple more things. Now, whatever kind of shutoff valve you have, make sure to leave it open for most of this so that while it's draining, you'll drain the fuel out of the fuel lines as well. All right, you don't want fuel staying in the fuel lines. And another thing that I did was I had one side of this propped up a little bit to kind of direct the fuel towards the fuel drain, okay? I also took a syringe and stuck it in the tank trying to look for any pockets of fuel. I didn't find any, which is a good thing. Also, I'm going to leave my gas cap off for about a week or so just to make sure the rest of the tank evaporates, okay? Now, there is one more trick that you can put in this uh, carburetor, and it's an old trick. It's a good trick. I don't have any transmission fluid, but if you have some transmission fluids, you could take a syringe like I showed you a minute ago and put just a little bit of transmission fluid in the syringe and inject it into the fuel line while you crank the motor a few, a few times to kind of draw it in there. This will kind of uh, protect the inside of the carburetor. I didn't do that on this two years ago, and you saw it started right up, but that is an old trick that you can use. It kind of equivalent to um, after-run oil. I used to fly model airplanes, and we would put after-run oil in the little engines and crank them over a few times, and that would coat the inside of the uh, engine. So that's a good trick to know too. All right, so I hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.